Today we discuss about evolved construction. In that article, we discuss these points. Firstly, geometrical representation of the Bragg's law. Second, construction of evolved sphere in reciprocal lattice. And three dimensional animation of evolves model to show X ray diffraction in reciprocal lattice. All these points we discuss one by one. Firstly, we explain the geometrical representation of the Bragg's law. For that, we use the Bragg's condition. That condition is derived earlier on the basis of assumption that. The crystal is made up of large number of equidistant parallel planes. When X-rays are allowed to incident on these planes, they get reflected and all reflected rays are in phase. They satisfy the condition. That condition is Bragg's law. 2D sin theta equal to n lambda, where D is the interplanar spacing, theta is the Bragg's angle and n is order of diffraction and lambda is the wavelength of x-ray. Here that equation we simplify lambda equal to 2 into bracket d by n into sin theta where d by n represent the interplanar spacing for the imaginary planes whose Miller indices are nh, nk, nl for a given plane hkl we take n equal to 1 therefore the modified term we write lambda equal to 2 d h k l sin theta h k l from that simplify sine term sin theta h k l equal to lambda divided by 2 d h k l that term we again simplify 1 by d h k l numerator divided by 2 by lambda this sine term we represent geometrically by using a circle in that circle we draw a right angle rectangle in that geometry the diameter of circle is taken as a hypotenuse of the triangle and its diameter we write as a 2 by lambda therefore the perpendicular component is 1 by d for a given plane hkl and opposite angle is theta the radius of circle is taken as a 1 by lambda using that geometry it gets satisfy the bragg's law that bragg's law we write in terms of sine theta hkl equal to 1 by d hkl 2 by lambda that represent its graph geometrical representation and from that geometrical representation we construct evolved sphere to explain the construction of evolved sphere in the reciprocal lattice we use earlier construction that construction gives its physical meaning in that geometry we imagine the crystal is at the center whose crystal plane is shown here. We mark the point on the sphere, that point A, where X-ray beam enter through the sphere and when it leaves the crystal through the point O, that point O which acts as an origin in reciprocal lattice space. When X rays incident on the crystal plane, then it gets diffracted, and the diffracted beam is along the direction CP. Here, the plane which makes an angle theta with the direction of the incident beam, and it also makes the same angle with the direction of diffracted beam therefore the angle we write in between c o p is same as the angle twice of o a p that equal to 2 theta so that the cp taken as a 
direction of diffracted beam. Here, the point O taken as a origin in reciprocal lattice space. From that origin, we draw normal to the lattice plane as well as AP, and that normal is along the direction OP. Hence, another reciprocal lattice point P intersect on the circle and it satisfies the Bragg's condition. That, that normal it represents the length of reciprocal lattice vector and it is equal to 1 by dhkl. Here when the reciprocal lattice vector and the diffracted beam intersect at a point, then diffraction is possible. Such a sphere we call Ewald sphere. Hence, how we define the Ewald sphere? Ewald sphere is a locus of point where the diffracted beam CP and reciprocal lattice point O and P intersect a circle of radius equal to 1 by lambda. That construction we call Ewald sphere. Now when diffraction is possible, that condition we see here. Firstly, if the magnitude OC is same as AC that equal to 1 by lambda, that magnitude is less than 1 by 2a means lambda is greater than 2a, then X-ray diffraction will not be possible. It means that this Ewald sphere does not intersect any point in the reciprocal lattice space, then in that orientation of the crystal plane of the particular wavelength, diffraction will not be possible. On the other hand, if OC is longer magnitude, that means it has shorter wavelength, means lambda should be less than 2a. In that case, all the points in the reciprocal lattice space, those are close to point A and P will intersect, then only diffraction is possible. It means if the lattice plane which are correctly oriented in the direction of the incident beam, then diffracted is possible, diffraction is possible and that diffraction point as acts as a another reciprocal lattice point and it intersect on the Ewald sphere. Now the animation of the construction of the Ewald model and it show how diffraction is possible that we show in the next slide. In that slide, it shows how Ewald model gives the diffraction in the reciprocal lattice. For that, we see here the reciprocal lattice space. In that reciprocal lattice place, uh, space, all lattice planes, these are rotated about a reciprocal lattice vector B star. As the incident X-ray beam of wavelength lambda is shown by a white line, it creates an imaginary Ewald sphere of diameter 2 by lambda shown by a green line. When the reciprocal lattice point taken as a origin where the X-ray beam leaves the crystal plane, 
that point we call the origin of reciprocal lattice point. From that reciprocal lattice point, we draw normal to all planes. Such a reciprocal lattice vector and diffracted X-ray beam when intersect or cut the sphere, the diffraction is possible. That diffraction is shown by yellow line. Hence, it is easy to visualize how the diffraction occur in by using the evolved model that is shown here. Thank you.